Well, today we're talking about something called on target. Don't worry, this is not a Second Amendment sermon. Some of you are like, praise God, he's going to talk about guns. No, I'm not going to talk about guns. But I am going to talk about being on target. And, uh, and, and so many times in our lives, we're not on target. And we don't know what we're shooting at and what's taking place. And it's all about vision. You know, as we go into this next season, this is like kind of a kickoff for the fall. We want to have vision for what God has for us in this next season. Where are we going as individuals? Where are we going as a church? I just kind of share with you just a little bit of what we're doing as a church and, and how we feel God is calling us to expand. And we want to reach more children, more teenagers, more everybody, right? But what about your life? Are you on target for what God has for you in this season? Now that we're getting out of the summer uh, and all that type of thing, and we're escaping, uh, the, I don't know, I thought it was the end of the world last night. Did anyone think it was the end of the world? Or was that the only one? Yeah, it was really, uh, for those of you watching later on, we had a thunderstorm. It looked like the second coming of Christ. So now, let's move on. <laughs> we want to be on target. The Bible says this, where there is no vision, the people perish. A lot of people quote this scripture. I hear it all the time from people not even believers. Without vision, the people perish perish. Without a vision of God, the people perish. And so it's so important we know where we're going individually, where we're going as a family, where we're going as a church, and where we're going as a country. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And here another version of it in Hebrew, actually the word vision, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, my Hebrew is not as good as my Greek, but they call it Calzone. I love calzones. <laughs> so if you come to the first service, we're going to make some breakfast calzones with pepperoni. Can I hear an eight? Come on. And for all you people that like tofu, we'll have a tofu calzone. Gluten-free. Cage-free birds. How's that? Cage-free. I don't know what that means. The chickens can run anywhere they want to. Okay, it actually means calzone. <laughs> actually, it means dream, revelation, or without a vision of God, w without a purpose in God, without seeing what God is doing, people cast off restraint. You know, if we keep on telling you, read your Bible, pray, come to church, <laughs> like, why? What's the sense? If you constantly go to the gym and work out and get yourself in, in, in shape, for what reason? But if you know you're going to be in a triathlon, or like some gentleman in our church who, who was an Iron Man, not the movie, the, the, the race, where they do the swimming, bicycling, and all that. And so he got himself into shape. And so he was like pushing away the food and pushing the plates away and pushing the plates up because he had a vision to compete in this Iron Man. So it gave him purpose. And so if you and I go after God, not just to go after God so we can be good and not sin, I don't want to sin, so I'll read my Bible. I don't want to do the wrong thing, so I'll read the Bible. Oh, God, oh, help me, Jesus. I don't want to own this far into the world. And we sit there scared. That's not what God's called us to be. Sit there, oh, Lord God, I don't want to sin. No, God doesn't have us here not to sin. He has us here to win. And when you win with God and you're doing his purposes, you end up not sinning, and sinning means missing the mark. That's what's actually hemartia in the Greek means missing the mark. In other words, you don't have a vision of God. I want to make sure we have a vision of God, a vision of God individually. And if we do that, our life is so much better. But the problem is, as we mentioned last week, we mentioned last week an illustration of how uh, it was an illustration, of course, but it illustrated a point that the devil had a boardroom. How can we mess up the Christians? We said what? Let them believe they have plenty of time. We want to redeem the time for the days are evil. So we want to have a dream, revelation, or vision. What does God want to do within the, within the 10 miles of this church, 20 miles of this church? This alone, I, I know right now, there are people that want to know Jesus. There are people at their last wits. And if we're so busy looking at our own lives, I'm talking about myself here, because just a couple of weeks ago, we were praying for people, and we were praying for those who don't know Christ. And I began to realize, wait a minute, I want to pray for people who don't know Christ, but who in my normal Normal everyday life am I interacting with on an ongoing basis where I can have a conversation with them? I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so much implanted in the church, which is good, that I'm not spending enough time taking out my garbage can and looking for the neighbor to talk to or going to a certain restaurant every day or a coffee place and begin to establish a relationship like I used to do and help people come to know Christ. I'm not just here just to live. I'm here to make a difference for Christ, Right? And so I want to encourage you, God has a vision for us. And a vision is one of the best ways to overcome difficulties. 
Just like it was on 9-11. We all had a vision. We got we to come together. We got to defeat the enemy, right? And the whole country, gang members, police officers were helping people. Imagine that, and that was in the natural. What would happen if we had vision of God? That's what God wants us. You see, where there is no prophetic vision, in other words, seeing what God is doing, no prophetic vision, it's the same verse, by the way, the people cast off restraint, and I have no reason to do a good thing. I know some people that were on sports teams, and then they're off the sports teams now, and they're just like, whatever, their health has gone downhill because there's no reason, right? If there's no reason, then we lose the ability to care in that regard. So I want to talk about vision, how to get our vision right individually as a church and as a people. God wants us to do that. You see, a life with targeted vision, targeted vision. Jesus was with his disciples, and they were seeing him do tremendous miracles. His teachings were extraordinary. He even opened the eyes of the blind man. And then he got his disciples together to rest and relax, to recharge their batteries in a place called Caesarea Philippi. It's found in the three Gospels, not John, but the, the Synoptic Gospels, which is the similar Gospels. And he came along with them and said, hey, who, who do people say that I am? He said, well, some people say John the Baptist, say Elijah, da 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 He said, no, no, but who do you say I am? And then Peter piped up and said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Jesus' face beamed out, and he said the following. Oops. <laughs> I jumped ahead of myself. <laughs> You're like, okay, hang on. Let me, let me tell you what happened. So Jesus said, Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood did not show you, but my Father in heaven. And Peter, on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Now, I want to bring it back to what the screen says, because the screen is telling me what to say, and I don't like it. But anyhow, I actually, and, and back in 2004, there was the Olympic Games in Athens, Greeks, and were, Greece, and there was a man by the name of Matt Emmons. Matt Emmons was a sharp shooter. He was a part of the rifle crew, and they would lay on the ground, they would stand up, and all these various things. He was amazing. No one could touch this guy. This guy was extraordinary. 120 feet away, he hit a bullseye. Amazing. And so if you study sharp shooters and things of that nature, they're, they're so in tune with their body, the, the gun, and then become one. Incidentally, someone took his gun and, and rammed a screwdriver and messed it up. He had to borrow someone else's gun, and he was doing amazing. All he had to do in this last round was just hit the target. Didn't have to hit the bullseye, just hit the target, and he would have overwhelmingly won. So he's climbing up, sits there, and what they do, by the way, I didn't realize it, but what they do, these marksmen, they slow themselves down, they control their breathing, and they literally control their breathing. And when they, when they pull the trigger, I'm sorry, I, don't want, I know that's against the law now. I have to look up like this way. <laughs> okay, this, I'm just going like this. There's no gun, okay? Uh, so I'm looking there. So they look at they look that, and what they do is they breathe, and in between breaths, they would pull the trigger. But not, not only that, it got to such a degree, he would even, they would even know their heartbeats. So they would control their breathing, calm themselves down, get their heart rate like the 50 or 48 or something like that, bring it down as low as they could, and, and look at the target. In between a heartbeat and a breath, he would pull the trigger. That way there's no, there's no, in, there's nothing interrupting because that little nuance, that little nuance of, of that heartbeat or that breath, and he hit bullseye. So here he is doing the same thing, looking straight ahead. He's got it. Slows his heart rate down, breathes. Bullseye, an absolute bullseye. And he looks up, he's like, I hit the bullseye. No one's, there's no noise, there, there's nothing on the scoreboard. What is happening? He shot the wrong target. Hence, and he lost. He, there was, the target said being here, he hit it over there. 
Normally what he does, he looks where he's at and he goes down. He hit the wrong target. I know a lot of people that look like this at the end of their lives. What was the use of it, right? Maybe, what was the use of my marriage? What was the use of how I went to school? Everything I did is for naught. Maybe you look that way. Maybe you feel that way. I've seen that face many times. What did I do this for? What was the reason I hit the wrong target? And that's exactly what can happen to your life and my life if we don't get the right target. We don't get the scope correct and keep the cross to whatever we're looking at. What determines where we, where, we, where we shoot our lives, where we go towards, is where the cross hairs are. The cross of Christ must be the marker. It is the determining factor of what I'm doing and everything that I'm doing. So what can happen is we can lose the target. What is the reason we're doing what we can do? You see, everyone ends up somewhere, but few people end up somewhere on purpose. Right? We, we, remember we talked about the other marksman, Charlie Brown, and he would just shoot an arrow anywhere. And then he'd go around and he'd draw a circle around it to show Lucy he hit the bullseye. Well, I meant to do that. No, he didn't. What happens if you and I would hear from God and see what the target is and aim our lives upon it and keep the cross of Jesus Christ in the center of it all? You see, this is what happened to Peter. Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. When Jesus asked, Did flesh and blood did not show you that, Peter? He says, he says, flesh and blood did not show us that, but my Father who is in heaven. Because what good is it to do all this great work and miss the mark? Dio, Dio Mui said the following, our greatest fear should not be a failure, but of succeeding at something that really doesn't matter. Do I want to be like that marksman? Do I want to be like Peter? Jesus told Peter this, when he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of God, he said this, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has what? Revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. And so Jesus was all excited about how Jesus, or how Peter, understood that he was the Messiah. He said, and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. On this rock, I will build my church. Peter had a target. He saw the reason. He understood. And then Jesus goes and says, hey, by the way, I'm going to have to suffer. I'm going to be killed. And all of a sudden, listen, everybody, if someone tells you, a friend of yours says, oh, by the way, I'm going to die. I'm not going to do well. I'm going to be arrested and killed. What would you say? Oh, praise God. That's fantastic. No, what would you say? God forbid, right? Any person worth their salt in your friendship would say, we don't want that to happen to you. So what did Peter do? No, Lord, no, may that never happen. And what does Jesus say? Jesus turned to Peter and said, get away from me, Satan. What? Why? You are dangerous, trapped to me. You are what? Seeing things merely from man's or human point of view, not from God. He was not seeing the crosshairs. And I want to encourage you that if we're going to do anything worthwhile in life, you and I need to get the cross hairs before us. We gotta make sure the cross is before us. We gotta make sure whatever we look at or whatever we do, we put the cross in the scope of our lives and that we focus it by reading scripture. That's how we get the focus and we keep the cross hairs. You see, you're seeing things merely from a man's human point of view, not from God's. This is what can happen to that. So what do we need to do? We need to surrender our life to Jesus daily in regards to how we do things. Well, this is so obvious. Yeah, I know it's obvious. But the whole purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ is about surrender. Rather than work, work so hard and trying to change behavior and have, give you a huge book, I can't do this, I can't do that. I, we're going to change our name to the can't to church. No, that's not what it's about. It's the can-to church. You see, and so I want to surrender my life daily to Christ. And what does Jesus say? Then he said to the crowd, by the way, this is the same passage. He just spoke to Peter about get behind me, Satan, because you're thinking of things of man and not God. In other words, Peter got the cross out of it. He didn't understand it. And this is what Jesus said. He said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Contrary to what you've heard, you can go your own way 
Remember that song by Fleetwood Mac? Okay, you bunch of, he- bunch of heathens there. You should be listening to K-Love only. You must give up your own way. You cannot just go your own way. You must give up your own way. That's the only way. Because you're not designed to be God. Listen, everybody. Every time you do it your way, I did it. It's my. Okay, you guys. That's that. Okay, that's Bon Jovi. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm having fun. <laughs> Name that tune. If we do it your own way, guess what's happening? You're you're in your you're in God's way when you do it your way. You're in God's way when you do it your way because you're not called to do it your way. You're called to do it His way. We're called to surrender to God. You've been designed to have a relationship with God that is loving, that is vibrant, that is growing, that is fulfilling. But the moment we do it our way, what happens is you and I become God, and we're lousy at becoming God. We're not designed to be God. When you act like God, you have a fatal spiritual disease which will destroy you from the inside out. It's not about being, the most free you will ever become is when you go back to your original design. See, he said to the crowd, if anyone wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross once in a while. Take up your cross daily, every day. I have to go before the cross. Christ lives, I bow to you, God. You are my God. I need to put myself on the cross. Take up your cross and die daily. I want to die to my flesh. And you know how I can tell if I'm alive or dead? When things bother me. Well, they didn't say hi to me. You're living for yourself. I'm not appreciated. You're living for yourself. You see what happens when you live for yourself? Anxiety comes in. Frustration comes in. Pride comes in. Arrogance comes in. All the problems of your life and my life come in the moment... We're God, and it's about me. It destroys everything and makes everything complicated. But when it's about Jesus, when you die to yourself, all that anxiety goes away. I'm telling you the truth, everybody. And so what we want to be able to do, I'm going to ask, uh, who can I bother today? Hmm. How about, how about Allie? Come here, Allie. Did I say your name right? Come on up. Give me a round of applause. Now, if I'm talking to you this way, if I'm talking to him and all of a sudden he says something I don't like, I'm offended. But if I go like this, Lord, let me see, Ali, as you see him. Father, I surrender my rights to be liked, to be appreciated, and Father, I want you to bless him. I surrender myself. Let me be like Christ who did not think of himself but gave us life for many. And now I'm looking through this this lens. I'm looking through the scope, and I'm seeing him through the cross. And I see that Jesus died for him, and he is as valuable to God as I am. And he's a brother in Christ. All of a sudden, all that toxicity of, I can't believe he said that, or or how about this one? He's so smart, I I don't feel as bright as I I'm just not as smart as he is. I start feeling low on myself. Guess what I'm doing? Guess what's happening? Guess who's not on the Guess what's happening? Christ is off the cross, and it's about me. You thank you so much. You see that, everybody? Someone needs to give that man ice cream. <laughs> give that man an ice cream. You're not lactose intolerant, I hope. Okay, good. Okay. We, do, we don't have any tofu ice cream. I apologize. But you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. Every day I got to take that cross out. God, why am I pastoring the church, Lord? Do I feel I'm unappreciated by the people that don't appreciate me? I work so hard. Oh, Jesus, you know how hard I work at the church. I'm here every time the doors open, oh, Lord. Please, knock it off. I don't need that violin story, right? As soon as I hear that, okay, get behind me, Satan. I don't need that. In Jesus' name, I'm going to put the cross there. there. Lord, I'm here for you. I'm not here for myself. Guess what happens? Oh, how about if I get in a discussion with my wife, which occasionally does happen, and I find myself getting agitated. You know what the problem is? I have to go like this before my wife. Lord, 
Ah. Not me, but let you live, Lord. All of a sudden, guess what happens? My patience comes back, everything comes back, and all of a sudden, I don't care anymore about winning an argument. I'm Italian. I like to win. And if I don't, I make you pay, okay? You heard about my cousin Louie, right? I make a phone call. Hey, Pastor Eric, what can I do for you? Take care of her. No, okay. But all kidding aside, it's not about that, everybody. It's about believing Jesus and giving up your rights. Because you don't have a right. You've been bought with a price. And the truth of the matter is, you're free. So really, our whole objective is to be surrendered to God. When I'm surrendered to God, I'm free. When you're surrendered to everyone else, you're bound up. If you try to hang on to your life, you will what? But if you give up your life for my sake, you will what? And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself lost or destroyed? You see, this is what has to happen. We have to let it go. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the son of man will be ashamed of that person. Why would you be ashamed of God? Because you're thinking about who? Go to our restaurant. Let's pray for the meal. Okay, the coast is clear. Jesus bless us. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, I never forget, I was at the outlet malls, which I hate going to, but I was in the outlet malls in, in Williamsburg, Virginia. It was, you think it's hot here? I mean, it was like the foyer of hell. It was hot. I saw little demons running around with pitchforks. It was so hot. So, and not hot asphalt where you could drop an egg and cook it. Some man got an oriental rug out and faced towards Mecca. He didn't care. Why are we like, the coast is clear, we can pray. If I'm ashamed of God, guess who's God? Guess who's more important than God? Me. We should be bold in the Lord and the power of his might. We can walk around confident in Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. I'm living for Jesus. I can throw my shoulders back. I can boast. I can be confident, not in myself, but in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way to feel. Instead of feeling, oh, my God, they might not like me. Like, Who cares? You see that, everybody? So we want to make sure we do it in the right way. I tell you the truth. Some standing here will not die before they see the kingdom of heaven. He was talking to his disciples who got a glimpse of what it meant to see the different realm and how important and how insignificant it was. And even during that time, by the way, Peter's like, this is great. Let's make a tabernacle. And then God goes from heaven. This is my son. Listen to him. So what God, what, 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 listen, this is an invitation to, to basically take out anxiety, take out frustration, take out selfishness, take out argu needless arguments and live for Christ. It doesn't mean we walk around like this. I'm just a Christian. Beat me up. Get over here, please. No, that's not what we're talking about. Walking around like, like some kind of zombie that doesn't do anything. If you're going to be a zombie, at least be scary. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about that we're finally become the men and the women that God's called us to be. We're bold in the Lord. We storm places. We make a difference. We stand up for truth. We're not a bunch of wimpy wimps. We're powerful men and women of God that are surrendered to God and we're about his way and God starts fighting our battles. That's a whole lot better, everybody. We're not just sitting there passively. We'll, Jesus, please come back. Lock the doors. Come back, Jesus. Let's just read our Bible and do nothing. No, we're to make a difference in society. We're to bring Christ into the workplace. Christ into the office. So, Surrender my life daily to Jesus. Be made new by Jesus every day. I need to be made new. How? By surrender your life to his way. Surrender your life to his will and his ways. Not my will, but your will be done. Even Jesus prayed that. He said, Lord, not my will be done, but let your will be done. Jesus kept the cross always before him. We need to carry, I, I, actually, we have a bunch of crosses made from now on, you guys need to walk out with a cross every day. <laughs> Wherever you go, take the cross with you. And we've, we've made it the way so you can take it apart and put it in your car. But when you get out of your car, put it back together and walk around like this. Okay? We're going to be called the Cross Church. You heard of CrossFit? 
Well, we got a cross church. <laughs> Surrender your life to him. All right? Now, spend time with him every day. Oh, come on. This is so obvious. Yeah, I know it's obvious, but do you do it? We have to calibrate. And by the way, when you have a target like that on the scope, you got to turn the scope a little bit. You got to bring the focus in. You got to take a moment to calibrate the scope to the gun, from what I understand. Right? I got to calibrate the scope to the gun. And I have to make sure the cross is aligned correctly. And how do I know that? By focusing. And how do I know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord to get into the scriptures? That helps you focus it, right? So I need to spend time with him every day. That's so important. Listen, everybody, it's so important. And you'll still mess up. But at least you'll get right in the right way. And we need to become like Jesus. Well, how do we do that? Get in a group of godly friends. It's easy to be a Christian all by yourself. I, I mean, it's easy to get along with myself, believe it or not. But when you hang out with other people, right? Someone says, I love the church, but I hate people. <laughs> I love God, but I hate his body. For those of you that are married, imagine, husband, you told your wife, honey, I love you, but I hate your body. Don't try that. <laughs> get some ice cream. Get in a group with godly friends. So why we have small groups, and I encourage you to get set up in groups. Why? Because it creates an atmosphere where you can grow. The Bible says, uh, what does it say? It says pray for one another, right? That you would be healed. And so how do we do that? We need to confess our sins for God and pray for one another that you may be healed. And so we have a bunch of small groups. Get involved. And if you don't have a good one, let me introduce you to one called Freedom. I think every believer should go through Freedom. Shows you how to disregard the lies of the enemy and replace things with truth. So if you don't have a good one to do, sign up for Freedom. There's a whole bunch of small groups. And the small groups on here that we're adding daily. There's even a marriage group now that we've added on there as well. So you can go online and find it. So this is kind of like a starter sheet. But you get their QR code, which is... On, no, it's not on there. Next week, we'll be on there. All right. <laughs> get in a group with godly friends. You can go outside. Uh, get honest with a few of them. Maybe after. You can never tell everyone in your business, but maybe tell somebody. Like, I just, I just got honest with someone this morning. I said, listen, let me tell you what's going on. Yada, 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 yada. This is what's going on, my friend. And I said, listen, I, the last thing I wanted to be is a fake pastor. You don't need any more fake people. Let's be real, Right? So get honest with a few of them. Hey, listen, this is what I'm going through. Does anyone know your secrets? So there's no secrets. You're only as healthy as your secrets, everybody. That's what's so important to get connected. And fix your eyes on Jesus. That's the answer. I know it's simple. It's the reason it's simple, because anyone can do it. You can be a PhD three times over or barely have your GED. All of us can do that. We can focus upon Jesus get to get that cross before him. Lord I want to die to myself I don't want to live for my own feelings and my own thoughts God it's all about you God I want to I want to put the cross to my family I want to put the cross to my marriage God I want to do it your way it says in first Corinthians one in first first Corinthians 3 that everything we do on this planet is going to go through the fire everything if you built your life on wood, hay, and stubble, that means you do things for yourself, things are temporary, you care about the applause of men. But whatever you do for Christ in love is like precious metal. It will pass through the fire, and you'll take it with you. We're moth. Don't take away. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the what? Perfecter. Who, who's going to help us out, everybody? Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Lord, I open my heart to you. Lord, write on the tablets of my heart. An author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the what? Cross. Because he saw beyond the cross. He saw what was on the other side of it. He saw heaven. He saw that you and I would be able to join him because he paid the ultimate price. Scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of God Almighty. Philippians 3.13, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I what? Focus. I focus. I'm going to spend some time in the Word, make sure my scope is correct. I'm going to get that focus right. 
I'm going to keep the cross there. I'm going to look at it. If I'm looking at a new job, I'm looking at a friendship, I'm looking at an offense, I'm going to, it has to go through the cross. Is this about me or is this about Jesus? You're like, I don't want to give it up. Then you give it up. And you're like, ah, wow, that, all the anxiety left. I just experienced this recently. In fact, I changed my sermon because of what I just experienced lately. Don't ask me what happened. I got bailed out last night. Okay, <laughs> just kidding. I press on to reach the end of the race, to receive the heavenly prize, which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Since then, you've been raised to new life of Christ. Set your what? Set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. You know, there's an old, old song we used to sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look forward in his holy face. Whatever it was, I don't remember now. Look forward in his holy face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light, we can we turn our eyes upon Jesus, look forward into his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow great, strangely dim. Truly, I find freedom. Let's pray. Lord, I, I pray right now, Father, that you would bless us by helping us to listen to your word. Father, we're sick to death of living for ourselves. God, we don't want to bow down to any other God but you. And Father, all of us in this room, if we're really honest, we don't always have the cross before us. We put other things before us, the American dream, expectations of what it means to be successful. Lord, we want to lay those things down. And Lord, we want to look at your cross and say, God, it's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. We thank you for the freedom that you give us through sacrifice, that we find a life when we give it up, and we lose our life when we keep it. Lord, we've been designed by you for you. So, Lord, we pray right now that I pray we put crosses between husbands and wives, between children and their parents, between employers and employees, between government and through all authority, Lord, we pray that the cross would always be in our scope. That we would not hit the wrong target in Jesus' name. Father, you've made it so simple. Thank you. You've made it so simple. And it's so freeing in Jesus' name.